next is the specific gravity of solid determination so for this also we use the pycnometer method and the only difference between water content and here is that we take the soil in dry condition and, and in the water content determination we took it in the moist moist condition so here it is in the dry condition so specific gravity as we know it is given as weight of solid to the weight of an equivalent volume of water so from in other word it can be written as weight of solids to the weight of an equivalent volume of water it means that if we can find out the weight which is weight of water which is occupied by the this volume of solids so vs gamma w gives us the weight which is occupied the occupied by the volume of solids in this method we can see if we can find out the water which will replace the uh, volume of solids which is there in this part so that that way we can calculate the specific gravity so the weight of solids can be easily given as w2 minus w1 because the soil sample is dry so if we just deduct the weight of container so we will get the weight of solids and for the weight of an equivalent volume of water let's see it can be done as w4 minus w1 so w4 minus w1 will give me the volume volume of water sorry weight of water which is there in this container now i want to find out the weight of water in this part so we have the weight of water when we are filling it completely now if i can deduct the weight of water which is on the top which means that this this weight of water we have to deduct and so we can calculate the weight of water which will come in this part so first of all it will be given as w3 minus w2 so w4 minus w1 will give me the total weight of water and w3 minus w2 is giving me the weight of water weight of water on the top because if i deduct w2 from w3 so i'll i'll be deducting the soil part so it only the water which is there on the top will remain and from the total if i remain the part which is on the top so i'll get the weight of water which is which will occupy the part where soil is there so the specific gravity can be written as w2 minus w1 divided by w4 minus w1 minus w3 minus w2 next is unit weight or density determination so we normally calculate the bulk unit weight or bulk density and if we know the water content so from there we can calculate the dry density by this relation so we generally calculate the bulk unit weight there are certain methods that is core cutter method water replacement method sand replacement method and water balloon method and the first two we use for cohesive soil and the other two are generally used for cohesion less soil so let's see what is the difference between them first is the core cutter method so this is used for the cohesive soils and for this what we do we take a cylindrical core and we force it into the ground so when we 
hammer it into the grounds so it will be completely filled with soil so soil uh, so we can get the weight of soil and volume of core is also known so from there we can get the unit weight so the unit weight is can be found out by the by these readings so first reading will be the weight or mass whatever we are calculating depending upon the unit weight or density let's say for unit weight weight of core w2 will be the weight of core plus soil and b is the volume of core so from here the bulk and bulk unit weight can be given as w2 minus w1 divided by volume and if we want to find out the dry unit weight so we will find out by gamma t upon 1 plus w so this is the formula for core cutter method but there are some limitations like we cannot use it for uh, cohesion less soil because we cannot cut out a core for a cohesion less soil it will not hold and it is only possible to find the unit weight when the soil is exposed to the surface so we can drive this core into the ground if it is at a point which is unreachable then this method is of no use next is the water replacement ma displacement method this is also used for finding the unit weight of or density of the uh, cohesive soil so it is possible for only for the soil for which we can take the lump sample so definitely it is only possible for the cohesive soil so we use the Archimedes principle in this case and so how we use it let's see let's say this is the lump sample and this container is filled with water and obviously the uh, density of soil is greater than the density of water so when we immerse it drop this sample into the water so it will completely go down and if it is going down and this if this container is full fully filled up to the top so it some water will come out of this container and the volume of water which is coming out of the container will be equal to the volume of sample this because of the Archimedes principle and this is what we use but the only difficulty which we face here is um, if we are dropping that sample directly into water it will disintegrate into the water because when it will come into the contact with water these particles will disperse so to avoid the penetration of water into the sample what we do we apply the coating of paraffin wax on the side so it the water will not uh, water will not penetrate into the sample so how we do we simply dip this sample into the paraffin wax so it will get covered from all the sides with the wax but the problem with this will be as we are uh, dipping it in paraffin wax so the volume of the sample will increase but we want to know the volume of just of the soil sample but it is containing the volume of this wax also so we need to deduct the volume of wax so the equation will come down to that volume of soil will be equal to volume of water which is volume of water displaced minus volume of wax now how do we find this volume of wax first we take the reading of weight of soil and then second reading will be weight of soil after dipping into in dipping it into wax so next reading will be weight of soil plus weight of wax and from here we can get the weight of wax so w3 by w2 minus w1 and the unit weight of unit weight of wax is known so if unit weight is known and the weight of wax is known then we can find out the volume of wax volume of wax will be equal to w3 divided by 
gamma of x and so from using this equation we can calculate the volume of soil volume of water minus w3 upon gamma of x and if we have uh, volume of soil and weight of soil also we have calculated so gamma t can be calculated with w1 divided by volume of soil and same procedure for the other thing so the all the methods are uh, differing in the calculation of the volume depending upon the soil we have to change the methods for calculating the volume of the sample other things are remaining same next is sand replacement method it is used for cohesion less soil for which we cannot cut the core or we cannot take the lump sample also so in this method what we do we dug a hole into the ground of required depth and we take out our sample this is the hole and we take out the sample of sand or whatever the soil is there cohesionless and we find out the weight of that sample it's a weight of uh, weight of soil from this reading we have got the weight of soil now we want to find out the volume of soil so volume of soil how can we find out uh, this is the cylindrical container and it is it has a conical bottom so we fill it with sand up to two third of depth mostly and we measure the weight see that is w1 and now then we will keep it on this surface here and we will open this knob so the sand will come out so the sand will fill, fill this hole plus the uh, this cone so then we will get the second reading w2 and but uh, what the problem is we don't want the sand which is there in this cone because we just want the sand of the hole the wall so we can find out the volume so the next reading will be we'll put this container on a plain surface and here we'll open the knob so just the sand will come out and we'll take that reading w3 so you using these three readings we can calculate the sand weight of the sand which is there in this hole now this weight is known and for uh, we take a, a container of given volume and we fill it with this sand and we fill it with sand so then we'll take the weight and volume also we know so unit weight of sand we can get from here from this method and now we know the weight of sand in this hole and unit weight is also known from these two readings we can get the volume of sand in the hole the volume of sand is nothing but the volume of soil for which we are doing the we are trying to find out the unit weight so weight is known and volume is known so we can find out the unit weight next method is water balloon method so <laughs> this is again here we are using another technique to find out the volume of the hole so again we dug a hole and what we do in this case we put a plastic bag in this hole and then we fill it with water so then we can calculate the volume of water which is there in this hole so weight we we know and volume also we know from the volume of water so from there we can calculate the unit weight and that's it so that's it for now